Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are talking about the Outlaw Rogue on the Shadowlands beta. This spec got a bunch of changes to its baseline abilities, to the way Blizzard wants you to play the class, and we've also seen a bunch of abilities and mechanics return to the game from past expansions, either through talents or legendaries. In this video I'll cover everything from baseline ability changes to talents, legendaries, conduits, and covenants, as well as giving you a little bit of feedback and an idea of how Outlaw Rogue actually plays. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up I wanted to take a look at the baseline changes to Outlaw Rogue because there have been quite a few. Poisons have been added back to all rogue specs, so we still get Wound Poison, Crippling, Instant, and Numbing Poison, which are situationally useful in both uh, Mythic Plus and PvP, a little less so in Raiding. Then, a new baseline ability that was previously a talent is Slice and Dice. Previously in the level 45 row, Slice and Dice has been removed as a talent and added as a baseline ability. So Slice and Dice was a maintenance spell that Outlaw or Combat Rogue had in the past and I think they wanted to return that as like a core mechanic um, when playing the Outlaw Rogue. I don't mind it too much, it's a little annoying to keep up an extra buff, but luckily they also changed Grand Melee, which is one of the buffs that you can roll with Roll the Bones, to extend the duration of Slice and Dice. So sometimes if you get lucky, you can build up a pretty long Slice and Dice so you don't really have to think about refreshing it all that much. Then Roll the Bones has been reworked and this has been a point of contention for Outlaw Rogues uh, pretty much since Roll the Bones has been introduced to the game. A lot of the Outlaw Rogue gameplay has revolved around rolling the correct buffs. So if you roll the wrong buffs, you would typically simply re-roll until you got the correct ones. And to roll the bones, you previously had to use combo points, and depending on how many combo points you had, um, it determined how long the duration of your roll um, buffs will be. So they reworked this ability to no longer cost combo points, instead it will cost a flat 50 energy, and it has a 45 second cooldown, which is affected by Alar Rogue's passive built-in CDR. Um, so in practice the cooldown is a lot shorter than 45 seconds and also every time you roll you will roll the buffs for 30 seconds so the duration of the buffs no longer varies the buffs that are available are still the same as they were um, and the only one that's been changed is the grand melee so this leads to a type of gameplay where you just roll the bones whenever your buffs fall off um, as far as i'm aware you no longer are re-rolling to try to get the correct buffs since the energy cost is so high on this ability. Rather you just roll and whatever buff you get you play with it for 30 seconds and then you roll again. So I think that makes Ala Rogue a lot simpler and less reliant on a weak aura that glows whenever it's time to re-roll. A few of our abilities have also seen changes. Um, Adrenaline Rush has been taken off the global cooldown which just makes it a little bit nicer to use in your opener. And a big change to our defensive is the return of evasion. So we no longer have repost. Instead, we have evasion like the, all the other rogue specs and it still functions the same way. You just get 100% dodge chance for 10 seconds. Another big change is that Between the Eyes no longer stuns. So Between the Eyes are probably our most important spender um, no longer stuns your target. Instead, Kidney Shot made a return, so you have the choice of doing damage with Between the Eyes or stunning your target with Kidney Shot. Especially in Mythic Plus, this ended up being a little bit of an issue where you would Between the Eyes targets maybe in a bad spot, especially in Sanguine. Um, so I think this overall is a good change because it just gives you options. Do you want to do damage with your combo points or do you want to use them on utility which is the choice that the other two rogue specs make whenever using kidney shot over their damaging abilities so instead between the eyes now provides a buff or a debuff on the target whenever you use it it increases your critical strike by 20 percent against the target that you between the eyes and it also increases your critical strike damage by 20 percent against that target so this makes it a lot more powerful than it was in the past, however, it does introduce a pretty significant negative effect to Outlaw Rogue and that is target switching. 
Alarog was notoriously good at swapping targets without having to give up any extra damage. A lot of other classes need to like build up debuffs and you know uh, have a little bit of a harder time switching targets just because of the way their toolkit is designed. Alar Rogue was super good at switching targets at will because they didn't rely on any debuffs to be placed on the target or any cooldown based uh, abilities that they needed to set up in order to switch targets. This does introduce a little bit of a challenge um, because it will reduce the effectiveness of Alar Rogues whenever there's a lot of target switching involved. The next major change has been to Blade Flurry. So this is the Alar Rogue ability that allows you to do AoE. It's been capped at a single charge, so you no longer have two charges of it, and it's a 30 second cooldown. However, Blade Flurry will now deal upfront damage whenever you press it. Um, it is on the global cooldown, but whenever you press it, it does physical damage to all targets or to five nearby targets. Um, and then all your abilities now deal 50% damage to four additional targets for 12 seconds. So in some ways, this is a nerf from the previous Blade Flurry, and in other ways, it's actually a buff. So it depends on the situation, but overall, I think this simplifies Blade Flurry a little bit, makes it a lot stronger while you have it active, and it also introduces a weird interaction where you will use Blade Flurry on single target because of the damage it deals. So as you can see on my tooltip right now, Blade Flurry deals uh, 1950 damage. If I look at my dispatch, for example, that is about the equivalent of a three and a half combo point dispatch. However, it only costs 15 energy. So it ends up being a lot more efficient to Blade Flurry um, if it's off cooldown, even on single target. So that's kind of weird, but outside of that, it still functions the same way as before. Next, let's look at the talents. Most of these have remained untouched. Uh, in the level 45 row, with the removal of Slice and Dice, we do get Dreadblades back. And Dreadblades is, of course, the artifact power from Legion. Um, it costs 30 energy, has a 1.5 minute cooldown, strikes at an enemy dealing physical damage and empowering your weapons for 10 seconds, causing your Sinister Strike, Serrated Bone Spike, which is the Necrolord ability, um, Ambush and Pistol Shot to fill your combo points, but your finishing moves consume 5% of your current health. So this ability gives Outlaw Rogue a lot higher burst than it had, uh, just making your opener a lot smoother because every single builder will fill your combo point uh, bar to its max. So you can just alternate builder, spender, builder, spender, instead of having to use multiple builders in a row to get to maximum combo points. Um, overall, Alacrity still beats out Dreadblades just because it's it's a boring talent, but it is very efficient. So I'd like Dreadblades to see a little bit of a buff or a Alacrity a nerf, uh, but because I really like the idea of Dreadblades, however, in practice it falls a tiny bit short. Then in the last row, uh, Blade Rush somehow evaded the target cap. So this makes it a very strong talent, both on single target, which is kind of what Blade Rush has been designed for, to be a strong single target talent. And since they didn't cap it, it also makes it the best talent on AoE as well. Then Killing Spree, however, has been capped and now only deals uh, its damage to four additional targets while Blade Flurry is active. So previously, Killing Spree was that little burst AoE or burst single target talent that you would take. But even in BFA, Killing Spree was not strong enough to take over the other two talents. And now that it's even weaker, um, I unfortunately just don't really see a chance for this talent to see too much use. Um, unless it will have a very strong interaction with the Guile Charm Legendary, which I will talk about in a little bit. Next up, let's talk about the Legendaries. There are a few that are pretty powerful and a few that... They added back to the game uh, because there were similar mechanics to it in previous expansions, but they fall a little bit short of the expectations. First up, a probably a fan favorite, we have Guile Charm. Take advantage of the natural ebb and flow of combat, causing your Sinister Strike to gradually increase your damage dealt by up to 30%. This maximum effect will last until cancelled before fading and beginning the cycle anew. So this is exactly like green buff, yellow buff, red buff that we had in the past, 
you just build them up with Sinister Strike and then you try to focus as much of your damage in that little red buff window as you could uh, before starting the cycle over and then that's where you would like refresh your maintenance spells um, so in this case you would like roll the bones, refresh your, your slice and dice and then just slowly build up combo points and conserve your resources until you got to the next red buff and then go in for another strong burst window. I really like the way this plays because it makes Outlaw a little bit more... It requires you to consider a little bit uh, how you press your buttons because if you go into a red buff window without properly setting up your debuffs, for example, you will get a lot less damage out of it than if you already had your slice and dice rolling, your roll the bones. If you end up having to like refresh your buffs in red buff, you lose out on a ton of damage. So overall, this legendary is a lot of fun to use, and it also does provide some pretty strong interaction with Killing Spree and Dreadblades, for example. I still don't think it will be strong enough to make Killing Spree viable, but I really hope that it will be. <laughs> um, then we have Celerity. So this legendary has a chance, while Slice and Dice is active, to proc Adrenaline Rush for 4 seconds. Overall, it just increases your energy regen by quite a bit. Um, since you keep up Slice and Dice all the time, ideally, you will proc quite a bit of extra AR effects. Then we have Mark of the Master Assassin. While stealth is active and for 5 seconds after breaking stealth, your critical strike chance is increased by 100%. So this just increases our burst damage even more. Um, it has some good interactions with like Dreadblaze, for example. Um, and also with the Between the Eyes debuff. And Outlaw Rogue is able to set up most of its uh, buffs before even starting combat. So if you have combo points available, then you can like slice and dice and you can roll the bones right before entering combat. And then as soon as you break stealth, you already have pretty much all your abilities ready to go. And Mark of the Assassin just gives you a little bit of an extra burst window. Um, so it's pretty cool to see. I'm not sure if it's going to be like a go-to legendary, but it still has some nice interaction with Outlaw abilities. And then the legendary that falls very short of expectations, we have Greenskin's Wickers. Between the Eyes has a 20% chance per combo point to increase the damage of your next pistol shot by 200%. So in BFA, Outlaw Rogue mainly revolved around the interaction between the Between the Eyes spender and pistol shot. So a lot of the Azurai traits, like Deadshot, for example, had a big impact on how well Outlaw Rogue played. Triple Deadshot on top of like one or two between the eyes uh, traits that essentially provided this benefit as this legendary made Outlaw Rogue's Deadshot or Pistol Shot deal a ton of damage. However, without stacking together so many of those different effects, this legendary is just way too weak. The extra damage on pistol shot needs to be a lot higher uh, for this legendary to function like Blizzard in intends it to. Next, let's take a look at the Covenants. For Kyrian, we have Echoing Reprimand, and it's just as annoying to use for Ala as it is for the other specs. Overall, I think it's poorly designed. It seems like a good ability on paper, but then in practice it ends up being so annoying to use that you just never want to play with it. Then for Ventir we have Slaughter, and unfortunately still has a lot of the same issues it does for the other specs. It's a little bit better than it is for Assassination, but in general I think this is still going to be one of the bottom tier um, covenants to pick, unless potentially has some use in arenas. But typically, Outlaw Rogue doesn't scale too well in arenas and doesn't um, really have the toolkit to do well in arenas compared to like sub or assassination. So I honestly don't think Ventir will see too much use either. Then for Necrolord, we have Serrated Bone Spikes, which fortunately enough seems to be the best ability for Outlaw as well, making Necrolord the best covenant for all three of the Rogue specs, and that is awesome to see because it means that you don't have to reroll covenants if you want to switch specs. In Mythic Plus and Raiding, it just increases your combo point generation so much compared to um, anything else that we get from covenants. And on top of it, it also deals a pretty significant amount of damage. So I'm very happy to see this ability be a part of the Aula Rogue toolkit. 
uh, because it just has so much flexibility in how you can use it. And then for Night Fae, we have Sepsis. Um, again, not super strong, but still better than like Ventir or Kyrian, in my opinion. Um, it gives you a fair bit of extra damage, uh, and if you can snipe targets that are dying, it does take a little bit of understanding of when targets are going to die because you want as much of the 10 seconds to tick as you can and then when the debuff is about to fall off you want the target to die so that you get that 60 second cdr so overall it's a decent ability not the strongest but um it does have some interaction with like utility and some legendaries as well and then moving on to conduits first up we have mb dexterity Main Gauche has an additional 10% chance to strike while Blade Flurry is active. So this just makes keeping Blade Flurry up on AoE and those Blade Flurry windows a little bit more powerful. And it also plays into using Blade Flurry on single target. So on top of the extra damage that you get whenever you press it, you also have an extra chance to proc your mastery. So this makes mastery a little bit more useful than it was in the past on Outlaw Rogue. Then we have Triple Threat. Sinister Strike has a 20% chance to strike with both weapons after it strikes an additional time. So this is especially strong in combination with Weapon Master. And as far as I know on single target, we will play Weapon Master um, because it does have the interaction with this Triple Threat Conduit, whereas Quick Draw will be slightly more powerful on AoE. Then we have Count the Odds, Ambush, Slaughter, and Dispatch have a 7% chance to grant you a roll the bones combat enhancement buff you do not already have for 7 seconds. This just makes it so sometimes you get random buffs and it's already pretty good. And on top of that, it can only grant buffs that you don't already have. So there's no way that you'll overwrite a good buff that you already rolled. So overall, it doesn't change too much, but it's a nice little addition. And then we have Slide of Hands. Roll the Bones has a 7% chance of instantly resetting its cooldowns. This one is absolutely useless. So first of all, there's a lot of issues with abilities like this. Um, Roll the Bones is already one of those buttons that you pretty much only want to press whenever you don't have any buffs active because it costs 50 energy. Uh, and on top of that, you also have a chance of resetting the cooldown whenever you roll something good. So it just even further reduces the effectiveness of this conduit. Um, overall, I don't think you'll play it in pretty much any situations. So now for how does Alar Rogue actually play? Because that's a big question. Um, Alar Rogue, fortunately enough, is one of the few specs that even very early on in expansion will play extremely smoothly. Um, and Shadowlands is no different. We have changed a little bit how and what we spend our combo points on. Previously, a fairly large amount of our combo points were spent on just re-rolling uh, buffs until we got the correct ones. That's been kind of taken out of the game, so now you're free to use a lot more combo points on doing actual damage or utility or whatever you want, which is a welcome change. A lot of our damage has also been shifted away from Pistol Shot, um, which was something that we saw get pretty out of hand with multiple Azurite traits in BFA. On top of that, the return of Slice and Dice um, might feel like a nice change to have once again on Combat or Ally Rogue. Um, for some people, it's a nice change. For others, not so much. It just adds another maintenance buff, which takes a little bit to get used to but I think it's not all that difficult to do as Outlaw Rogue tends to generate quite a bit of extra combo points uh, compared to like Assassination, for example. So overall, I think that Slice and Dice fits into the toolkit and the, pl the gameplay and the playstyle pretty smoothly. So what content can we expect Outlaw Rogue to still be very strong in? I assume that Mythic Plus will still be where Outlaw Rogue thrives. On single target, there are still some issues that we did have in the past as well, mostly with Roll the Bones RNG. So in raiding, especially where you want pretty consistent damage from pull to pull, Outlaw Rogue doesn't tend to do all that well. But in Mythic Plus, where sometimes rolling big allows you to pull off a big pull, um, has definitely some increased value. So overall, Alar Rogue has retained its very fast-paced and smooth playstyle. 
I do like the added options that we have with Shiv uh, that will see quite a bit of value in Mythic Plus and in PvP potentially. Also with the decoupling of the stun effect from between the eyes and then moves back to Kidney Shot. We now no longer have to worry about stunning mobs in Sanguine Pool. Um, so overall, I think most of the changes for Outlaw Rogue have been fairly positive. I'm still not sure how I feel about the Roll the Bones change. I really wish that they balanced the buffs a little bit better uh, so that you literally only had to roll every 30 seconds and the value between the buffs was a lot closer together because currently there's still a fairly large uh, discrepancy between rolling your best buffs um, or your worst ones. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about Outlaw Rogue? Um, are you happy with the changes they made into Shadowlands or do you wish there were more and if so, what do you wish they changed? Again, thanks for watching the video and if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.